Hi everyone, to be unemployed, it's not just someone that doesn't have a job, it's far more technical than that, as this definition shows. The unemployed consists of those of a working age who are willing and able to work, actively seeking work, but don't have a job. So you see, far more technical than just someone that doesn't have a job. We need to know this definition off by heart, and the best way to learn it is to break it into four different parts. Part number one, you need to be of a working age, and in the UK that is defined as being between the ages of 16 and 64. That's part one, you've got to be willing and able to work. Part two, actively seeking work. Part three, and then crucially, obviously, without a job. Part four, that's our definition of unemployment. Quite technical, quite difficult to be unemployed. Countries around the world will have two major measures of unemployment, with the dominant one being the LFS measure, the Labour Force Survey measure of unemployment. And all that is, is a massive survey conducted in the UK by the ONS, the Office for National Statistics. And in that survey, a lot of questions will be asked of these different households. In the UK, it's 40,000 households, that's 100,000 people are surveyed. And they're asked all these questions. And from the data that's collected, the ONS can work out the number of employed people, the number of unemployed people, that's people that match that definition in black, and also the number of people who are economically inactive. That's the number of people of a working age, but who aren't willing to work. And when all that data is collected, we can then work out the unemployment rate, the percentage of people who are unemployed in the economy. And to do that, we use this equation. And this is a very important equation to know off by heart to write down. The unemployed, so the unemployed, divided by the economically active. That is the number of people of a working age who are willing and able to work, and either they are in work or they're actively seeking work but are not currently in work, i.e. the economically active are the employed plus the unemployed. So the unemployed divided by the economically active multiplied by 100 will then give us the unemployment rate in the economy. Fundamental that we know the LFS measure of unemployment like that. But there is an alternative. And that alternative is the claimant count, which is simply a measure of the total number of people who are claiming unemployment benefits. But this is by no means the headline measure. It's just an alternative. It's just another piece of data that we have to look at unemployment, but definitely not the headline measure. The headline measure is the LFS unemployment rate. Why not? Well, one of the major issues with the claimant count is that it's very difficult to compare between countries. Some countries might not even have unemployment benefits. So how on earth would you compare unemployment rates between countries, if that's the case. But even countries that do have unemployment benefits, the conditions to claim benefit will be very, very different. So to compare between countries is basically impossible using the claim account measure. But then two reasons here means that the claim account measure is always going to be below the LFS. It's not always going to be telling us exactly the correct number of people who are unemployed because not everybody who is unemployed will claim it. Maybe they don't need to claim it. Maybe there is a bit of embarrassment in claiming it, so they don't claim it. Maybe not every Everybody can claim it. Naturally, it's a handout by the government, a money handout. So there are going to be strict conditions to claim it. So for example, if you have a spouse earning a certain amount of income, you won't be eligible. If you have a large amount of savings or assets, you're not going to be eligible, etc. So not everybody can claim it. And that means that the figure is always really lower than the LFS measure. But also another issue, it could be subject to fraud. You know, it is money handout at the end of the day. So that's why it's not the headline measure. The LFS measure is. That's the one we look at. That's the percentage rate that gets all the headlines. But even the LFS measure, even that unemployment rate has got major issues. One of the biggest issues is the sampling size. I mentioned, didn't I, 40,000 households in the UK are surveyed. That's about 100,000 people. That's a very tiny sample of the entire working age population, which in the UK is around 40 million. So you're surveying 100,000 people of 40 million, and you're trying to extrapolate from that data to get the unemployment rate for the whole economy. Well, there are going to be sampling errors. And the uh, current error, the margin of error of the unemployment rate in the UK is plus or minus 3%. That's quite a wide margin of error. And the reason why there is such a small sample is because of how expensive it is to conduct the survey, to then look at the results from the survey, and to interpret all the data. It's very expensive to do. And that's why the sampling size is so low. So the margin of error really is a good issue for you to talk about if you're writing about this or if you're evaluating the unemployment rate. But another issue, 
is, is the rate itself telling us the correct information about who is unemployed? Or maybe not. If discouraged workers are being left out, and they are going to be left out because discouraged workers, workers who have tried and tried and tried to get work, but every time they send off an application, they're rejected, or every time they go to an interview, they're told they're not suitable. You can imagine after a period of time, those knocks become very difficult to tolerate, and these people give up. And that means they drop out the labor force. They are no longer willing to work. They're not seeking work anymore. And that means they're not going to be counted as unemployed. But these people really, if you think about it, should be counted. They might be in their 20s, young workers, very high working potential, productive potential for the economy. They are an unemployed resource, but they won't be counted in our official unemployment rate because they're not seeking work anymore. They're not willing to work. These people are known as the hidden unemployed and will be missing from official unemployment data. What about inactive groups? Well, there are some inactive groups. Um, by that, we mean those of a working age but who aren't willing to work. There are some inactive groups. We don't mind uh, for them not to be counted in the unemployment rate, like full-time students, as an example. But maybe there are some groups who we think should be counted as unemployed. Look at carers. Look at the early retired. Look at those who are reliant on their spouse's income. Maybe those guys, they could be quite young. The early retired could maybe be in their 40s. Carers could be in their 20s. Um, those relying on their spouse's income could again be in their 20s. Workers with high productive potential for the economy. They are basically an unemployed resource, but won't be counted because they're not willing to work. They don't meet the definition of unemployment in black there. What about the underemployed? The underemployed could be counted incorrectly in unemployment data. In unemployment data, the underemployed are counted as fully employed. Here's something amazing for you in the UK. To be counted as fully employed, you only need to work for one hour a week and then you're counted as fully employed. Well, clearly, if you're working part-time and you want full-time work, you are not fully employed, right? You are partially underemployed. You're partially unemployed. So to be recorded as fully employed is wrong. What about those working on zero-hours contracts, flexible contracts, which give the firm a lot of control over employability? If you don't want to be on those, again, you're going to be counted as fully employed, when actually you're not. You're partially unemployed. So the underemployed are recorded as fully employed in unemployment data, which might be you know, construed as incorrect and not right. And another issue is that the headline unemployment rate from our LFS measure here doesn't tell you about disparities in unemployment across the economy. Differences in unemployment rates, whether it's age related, so youth unemployment might be much higher than the headline rate. Maybe there is a wide difference between uh, unemployment and gender, so maybe higher male or female unemployment rates. There might be disparities with race, so higher unemployment rates for black workers or Asian workers, Hispanic work, workers, etc. Uh, the headline rate doesn't tell us anything about that. Maybe there are disparities between regions, which the headline rate doesn't tell us about. So disparities are important to know because they tell us about potential underlying structural issues in the economy. But if we just look at the headline LFS measure, we're not going to know about these really important disparities that might be existing with unemployment in the economy. So that's unemployment for you, what it is and how we measure it, but also issues with the headline measure as we've seen. Very important to know that. Stay tuned for the next video as we look at different types of unemployment. I'll see you then, guys.